Dr. Amanda Ramirez, doctor of physical therapy, wishing you a wonderful morning. How are you? I'm here to show you lessons learned with my ivory suede shoes. I love a good monochromatic moment, especially one that is all oatmeal, all ivory. I love wearing all white from head to toe. A lot of people, their first reaction is always, I could never, I would get that so dirty in an instant, I would spill on me. And here's the thing, yes, of course, anybody is susceptible to staining an all white and all ivory outfit. I am not above that. But the way that you carry yourself, the way that you move is so much different when you are wearing all white. I move more intentionally. I move slower. I'm more aware. And those are all things that I enjoy. There may be the inevitable circumstance that happens where you get a stain. Here's the next part of the journey, knowing how to address those stains. Suede is going to be very, very stainable. It's just the nature of it, especially if it's white or a very light color, very light tan, an oatmeal cream. I've had a few pairs of ivory suede shoes, so story time about a mystery stain on my ivory suede shoes that I could not figure out until recently. The mystery has been solved. I noticed that there was this really significant and large black stain on the right heel. I didn't know where it was coming from. I thought it was from when I came home from the end of my day, the way that you kind of kick off your shoes by using the other foot to hold down the back of the shoe and then you take it off. I thought I had just gotten into this really consistent habit creating this repetitive staining pattern. Not ideal when your shoes are white. I took them to go get professionally cleaned and in the meantime, I wore my new Donald Pliner Resolute for shoes when i was driving as i was braking hitting the gas i could feel that friction point at the back of my right heel this is where the stain is coming from when i came home after realizing this start to see already that there's just the tiniest the slightest about to be could be stain forming and if you don't know, there are these erasers that you use to help get stains out of suede. And I began to just do what I could to take away whatever stain had been wanting to, to form. There's also the possibility for you to use a brush and that starts to get deeper into the fibers of the suede and help brush out stains and get the dirt that's trapped in there but I didn't feel that my stain was that serious so I didn't want to start going at it with a brush or any liquid cleaner I just knew that addressing it with the eraser was going to be a great start knowing now that there's this tendency of my right heel to get stained with how shoe is rubbing a bit against the floor of the car. I am going to add extra stain and water repellent, extra protectant to the heel of my shoe. I already showed you in another video how I protect my leather and suede and new buck shoe investment. When you first get the shoe, you need to do it on a completely dry shoe. If there's any stains, I'll try and address them first let it completely dry, and then I spray down the shoe with the protectant. You do not want to saturate it. It's just a light coating, and you want to be about six inches away. So there's this back and forth spraying. I showed you two sprays that I have for protectant. In the first video, I used this bottle spray, and I find that for shoes, it gives me a little bit more control, whereas the Scotch Guard is in this aerosol container and it just blasts out. It just comes out and because a shoe is so small, you can't help but initially saturate that. Keep that in mind when you're using Scotch Guard versus a protectant that's in a bottle that's more of a manual pump and spray. I say this because when you use Scotch Guard on a backpack, when you use Scotch Guard on your furniture, it's very convenient that it comes out at todo lo que da. It comes out with a lot of intensity. But when you're doing your shoe, sometimes the first pass I'll do is with just the manual spray bottle pump because it gives me more control and it gives the shoe that initial protectant so that 24 hours later, after I've let it sit, let it dry, I come in with a second round of a Scotch Guard. And if I overdo it, I know that the first layer is not going to allow it to penetrate as much. So those are my lessons learned from my adventures in ivory suede shoe wearing. What'd you learn? What questions do you have? Let me know and ask away. If you are curious as to how your shoe choices can grow your glutes, 
how your shoe choices can tone your legs, more about the anatomy of a shoe, interested in seeing the shoes that I purchase and why, and learning more about shoe care, I am in the middle of a shoe and foot series. So be sure to check out all the other videos where I touch on those very topics and more. Let me know what topics I should talk about next. Let me know what you're curious about. Let me know what you want to know, and I'm happy to answer. If you have goals to enhance and to improve your body, starting with your feet, starting from the ground up, starting with your foot function, with your foot health is an excellent place to start. It is a foundational start point for when you want to tone up your legs and when you want to grow your glutes. If those are your goals, you know that I'm your go-to resource. And a lot of my protocols in my virtual course, Lymphatic System Beauty Secrets, will be of great benefit to you. You can purchase that virtual course over on my website, www.amandaramirezdpt.com.